All right, so welcome, guys. We're, we're on episode two. We did a, an incredible show yesterday. We started off with just three of us, guys. Uh, my name is Dane, by the way. We also have Liz Charles here, Rico Rolando. And Ooh. our guest for today on the Homeland Show is Edith Bo. Am I saying it right, Edith? Because I always mess up your name. Yep, Edith Bo. All right, perfect. And Thank you for coming. I can give the people a rundown on who exactly is Edith Bo, but I would love for you to just give us that in 30 seconds. Um, a rundown of who I am? Yes. Okay, um, I am an artist manager in an A&R. Um, I have worked with Big Sean, Hip Boy, DJ Mustard, um, St. Bodie. Uh, I worked at Rock Nation for five years, and prior to that, I worked for Dan Weissman on the management side. Um, and we worked with Capital Cities, um, had a big hit single called Safe and Sound. And from there, uh, we joined Rock Nation and had a big roster over there and um, traveled the world with Rock and um, signed some great publishing acts as well, uh, Joelle James, um, Dorothy. And then I started my own company called Architect. Architect has um, a publishing roster and a management roster as well. And um, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. We partnered with Sony ATV when we signed St. Bodhi. Um, she then signed to Def Jam, and she's been releasing music, which is great. Uh, we also have King El Noir, uh, Money Jesus, and we just signed some really exciting new acts. So I'm excited for this quarantine to be over so we can start releasing music again. <laughs> oh, man. And for, before I even go any further, guys, thank you so much, Edith. Does anybody have any questions for Edith? You want to jump into this? I mean, I'm, I'm so curious to see what you and Rico can talk about, given your connection with music. Um, I just want to hit you just from the perspective of you're saying, you know, you're waiting for COVID to be done so you can release music. You know, there's kind of a dichotomy of right now being a time when all people can do is consume content. So that includes music. But at the same time, I have friends of mine who are artists who are like, our stuff is just going out and because there's so much noise in the atmosphere, people aren't checking for her tracks the way that they should be um, because all they care about is the COVID news. So how are you um, navigating, you know, positioning artist release amidst this time? You know, it's interesting. Um, I just actually talked to Billboard about this last week and they had an, a good article that came out. Um, it's tough. I, I, I want to release music and content, but the problem is, is that like, I just don't feel like it's gonna make as big of an impact as I want it to. And mm -hmm. streaming numbers are down. Um, I don't remember the exact percentage, but it's like a, it's a pretty big percentage that is down. And um, I, I don't know if it's necessarily the best time for new artists to release content. Um, a lot of new artist rollouts consist of like going and having meetings with different streaming services. Um, speaking to curators, connecting with curators directly, um, you know, sending music via an email, that's not as effective. Like, sure, they'll like the music, but they always want to meet in person. I know some of my friends are having, um, they're having like different, you know, FaceTime kind of meetings with curators and um, the marketing managers and digital marketing managers are, are pushing it that way. But do I think that it's going to be super effective for my roster? Um, not as much because we either haven't released music yet or we're just getting started and we're just getting good traction and good write-ups and stuff. So um, we've had to shoot, we've, we've had to push back sh uh, video shoots as well, mm -hmm. which is, a, is, is also very impactful. Um, premier partners are, you know, not premiering music as much because they're covering, you know, they're covering Corona. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, I think that if you're a, a bigger artist, like a mid-tier, artist um it's still fine if you're going to release music um if you're like a big name say you're cardi b it would still be fine if you're rihanna it's still fine but if you're it's just a developing act um i think it's better to just kind of sorry my dog is popping in here <laughs> um i think it's uh i think it's oh, better to wait a little bit cool, see what goes happens and also i mean we have to figure out different ways of, of working in the industry together right now yeah yeah, I think that's yeah. what it's all about. It's like it's just trying to figure out like how can we be more creative because the world has like shift. It's a complete shift, and everything is not as uh, as it used to be. Um, and and even talking about that, we just had like our press briefing here just a few minutes ago, and we we've seen the incredible numbers in the United States. Like you know, New York is is up by two hundred, and that's two hundred um, people that has, that has died last night. And um, some places in the UK, I think the UK is up by five hundred. 
And those numbers, um, they trigger a lot of emotions in us. But at the same time, we're also trying to figure out, like, what do we do now? Because after those numbers were, were named out, we started to talk about our bread and butter here in the Cayman Islands, which is tourism. And we're told that, you know, our premier said that we won't be opening tourism for a long time here on this island. That means there's a lot of people without jobs. Now, here's, here's where a perception comes in people's head here, especially on this island. They're saying, okay, well, the rest of the world can move, but we can't. Mm. And, and when they're talking about like even the music industry, you're talking about like the Khaleds, the, the Diddy's, the Big Sean's, and you two, Edith, that's an that's a executive, you guys are you guys are going to feel this too very soon because you guys are a part of the economy. So yeah. if not feeling it already, the effects of it, uh, what do you what advice do you give to like an upcoming artist, not an upcoming artist, but someone that's in the industry right now that's on standstill that cannot make any money right now? That's interesting. See, I'm um, we just had a call. Uh, my business partner, Stan and I, we just had a call um, and we're trying to figure out ways of um, getting through at least this next month because they just announced in LA that until April 30th, you know, it's been extended that we're supposed to stay at home. So this might be longer. We don't know, wow. but we do figure out a way to, to keep moving. And um, I've been having conversations about like potentially rescheduling different recording sessions that we had going on, maybe not focusing so much on hey, what's the rollout for this album that we're going to be releasing? Like, just, you know, pause the brakes on that until we can start moving, you know, physically around everywhere. But for now, why don't we just, why don't we just, like, figure out a Zoom session? You know, like, a writer and a producer can get onto, you know, Zoom and can start a recording session from there. Like, mm -hmm. we can send beat packs. Um, we can still pitch records. Uh, we might not necessarily be able to, you know, release a full a full length album and do the promo that we wanted to before. But people are people are doing live streams right now and different performances, and um, you can still promote records that way. So I think it's like an important time for at least the next week for us to figure out how to keep moving and not get so discouraged. Uh, because like as executives and as managers right now, we're dealing with probably most of our clients are struggling with depression and anxiety. Um, one of the top issues that I'm having is like, there's, there's like no, it kind of feels like there's no end to this. Like when is, when is this going to end? And the feeling of unknown and uncertainty is, is the worst thing for me at least. And I'm sure that it is for everybody else as well. So um, we should all just get together and start figuring out ways to, to cope and to help our talent and um, you know, provide different links to, for people to survive during this time, because especially independent artists, they don't have a big paycheck and a big advance that they can live off of during this time. So how are they going to be making money? And, um, and so that, that's what I'm, I'm currently doing for the next week. I'm going to be trying to figure out what we can do if this situation gets prolonged over a month. Um, but I don't have as many answers as I would love to have right now. Mm -hmm. I think you pretty much answered it. I think you did a great job in answering <laughs> what yeah. you just stated. And um, that was, that was beautiful. Edith. Thank you so much. Um, and I was, my next question to you was going to be like, how are you coping with yeah. COVID-19? What are you doing? Cause I know you're always someone that it's, it, you're busy. You can't get you on the phone, you get to schedule appointments and um, you're just always tied up into something, which is good. But this has forced a lot of people to settle down, to, to kind of be quiet now and, and just figure out how to reset their minds. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has any question for Edith before I jump yeah. in. Well, I just want to piggyback off of that because it's not only, you know, as managers, you're, mm -hmm. you're so often taking care of other people, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're talking about the fact that, you know, your artists need, you know, are dealing with anxiety and depression and those kinds of things. And so I think it's it's a little bit difficult sometimes to take a step back and be like, wait, no, I know I got to take care of these artists, but also you got to take care of you first. So I'm just wondering, yeah, I'm with Dane on how you're yeah. doing. Same, same, same uh, question as well. Well, um, I I'm a Virgo. I am very scheduled, <laughs> so I'm still trying to like I'm still trying to like little planner, and I try to keep everything consistent with my plans for the day, who I'm going to reach out to, connect with. Um, different executives and I have been like checking in with each other um, and seeing how we could be proactive and also just like, Hey, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Like, 
no one is falling off the face of the earth for each other and like or without like we're checking in with each other and we're also checking in with each other on on live there's different calls that are going on um uh on on live like produ like producers are checking in with each other and writers and um executives are doing really fun lives and so we're all tuning into that um there was a uh, sean garrett and the dream just uh yeah. got they had their little <laughs> their little contest yeah. um so we're all on there and you know laughing goofing off and making fun of each other and stuff and so i think that that is a, an essential tool right now is the check-ins scheduling stuff for yourself making sure that you're still staying um healthy working out at home that always helps me um but i mean i'm i'm fine i just the thing that i struggle with is i had such great plans for the next for, for the next three months mm -hmm. and i don't know when i could reschedule any of that mm -hmm. and so i know my talent is very frustrated with it and i'm i'm trying to help them with just coping on a daily basis um, Stan, my business partner, you know, he's talking to them every single day and, you know, giving them suggestions and stuff. If anyone's struggling with money, like we're always here to help. Um, so I, I think we're all in the same boat. Like in this situation, it's, it's super unique because every single person is struggling with exactly the same thing at this moment. Yeah. Yeah. All gonna end. Okay. We all don't know what we're going to be doing next or, you know, how we're going to be rolling things out or if we're going to be, you know, stuck in the studio for the next nine months or going to be releasing new content. No one knows. Um, but I, I think that we all have to start planning for at least the next month of what, what we can do to stay mentally in check with ourselves. Yeah. That's an important one because I know in the creative industry, I've dealt with a lot of people that suffer from depression. And I, I'm not going to just like point fingers or, or throw rocks at anyone, but cause I'm, I can only speak for me. I, you know, tend to suffer with that a lot of times. And when that happens is because of three crucial things. Um, one, the most important one, I forgot, I forget who I am and what I'm capable of and where I'm coming from. And that's the yeah. key thing I forget. Number two, laugh at it if you want, but exercise. For some reason, exercise clears your mind. <laughs> And Not for some reason, because yeah. of science. Yeah, science. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that is um, my biggest mechanism right now. <laughs> yeah, it helps. It, it really does clear your mind and it helps you to, to think, to, to, to actually think straight. And the, the last one, and Edith, I've spoken to you about this, is actually seeking someone to talk to. Um, Absolutely. Men are afraid of this, but now we're online. There's Zoom meetings. Like, go and speak to a counselor. Go and speak to someone and man up. I, I always say, you know, don't be afraid to to man down. Like, get down on your knees and and um and go and talk to someone and pour it all out and even pray yeah. if if that's who you are. But but yeah, don't be afraid of those things. And and I, what I want to ask you, Edith, is like for anyone that's in the creative arts, and I think you kind of answered this already. Anybody that's in the creative arts, in the entertainment industry, whatever they, they are in creativity, they could be a director like Liz. Like, what are the key things besides the things that I name that you have to do to get your mind right? I, I, right now, right now during this time or just in general? Like right now, like in general is probably, <laughs> it's a must, but right now in this time, I would say, like this is the most crucial time. This is different for them. They can't even go outside. Like they can't do anything they used to do, um, perform a concert, plan a film, shoot a music video. Uh, there's just yeah. things they can't do. So probably more in this time. I mean, we're, we're, we always have ways of being creative. Like there's still Amazon, you can still go on Amazon and, and buy paint if you want. If you're a creative, Chris Brown, for example, you know, is, is known to be um, an artist. He also paints. So if, if you're that kind of creator, go get some paint online. Figure out a creative outlet because one thing that you need to keep in mind always as, as a manager and just in general, if you're working in music and you're working alongside creatives is that um, a lot of them struggle with different, you know, anxieties and depression. And so when we're, when we have those tools to help them, meaning like we can reach out to a producer and we can ask for a beat pack and say, you know, hey, listen, like, do you have a beat pack for, for this artist so that they can just write because they just need a, a creative outlet? It doesn't matter if you're going to come up with a song about Corona. It doesn't matter what you're going to come up with. Like, there shouldn't be at this time any kind of planning. Just go and create things because it makes you feel better. Go mm -hmm. work out. makes you feel better. 
make a healthy omelet for breakfast because it makes you feel better. Like it should be really your time to focus on yourself. I, I read a lot of books. I do audiobooks. I chill in the bathtub, just turn on an audiobook. Like that, I, I've always done that, but I definitely increased the number of books I've read <laughs> during the last two weeks. <laughs> um, so, you know, just kind of doing those kinds of like self-care things, put on a face mask, you know, do your nails. Like you can't go get your nails done right now. So go do your nails on your own, like make yourself feel better. And, you know, whatever it is, that's the best way to do it. If, if you ask me. Anybody else? Anybody else want to ask you any questions now? I mean, I got yeah. like a list. Yeah, definitely. Um, So, you know, like there's so many up and coming artists right now and most of them, tend to like go to Los Angeles and think that their dreams are about to come true. And now all of a sudden they're facing this coronavirus. Um, are you, what, what kind of vibe are you seeing right, like right now in LA in terms of just people obviously seeking, obviously financial gain from anything right now that they can. Um, what's the vibe like right now? The vibe is, um, I mean, contracts are still going out. So if you were closing a publishing deal or you were closing a record deal, that most likely is still going on. Mm -hmm. um, if you are about to be releasing a project and you're, you're an artist, then your contracts are still going out and you're still finishing, you know, all of your, all of your contracts for your album. So that stuff is still happening. So I do see producers still getting a check and okay. why buyers are still going into accounts. That's not, that's not any different. Uh, bank is an essential thing. Contracts are an essential thing. People are still planning on releasing stuff within this quarter or within the next quarter. Um, but you know, I'm seeing more of the difficulty when it comes to independent artists, like people that don't have a, a bigger team around them with a publishing company or a record label, or that don't even have a manager. Um, that's the struggle that I'm seeing. And I'm actually working on trying to figure out how we can help them with coping during a time like this, because Right now in, in the U.S., we have to provide our 2018 or 2019 taxes in order to get, you know, the, the $1,200 check right now. So, um, and that's just a $1,200 check. Like, how much is that really help that are independent? Um, so, I'm, I'm working on providing, like, a full list of everything, actually, to Billboard of all the things that independent artists can do um, to just get themselves through this period uh, kind of writing out as well, like, do you have to pay your rent? When are you going to, when are you going to, when can you pay your rent or how long can you extend it until stopping, you know, your, your Geico car payment, whatever, it, or insurance payment, whatever you have to do to stop things like insurance. If you lost your job and you're a bartender, you're an independent artist or independent songwriter producer and you lost your job, like stop all of your payments for now. They're being really, really chill about everything. Um, so I'm seeing kind of like more of like how how are people coping with financial problems more than anything, yeah. and that's what I'm trying to help everybody with. Awesome, boom! I love Edith's doing that, man. Um, you know, when I when I used to turn on the news before COVID nineteen, I used to see that the destruction the world was already in, and like as Rico said yesterday. Like our oceans has never looked so beautiful. Um, the people, people are becoming so humble and, and doing so much incredible things. We're figuring out ways on how to help people, how to be a part to donate, like and how we can help with research to try to get a vaccine early enough. Um, I see hope. Like a lot of people are seeing fear in the world, but I see hope. And that's incredible because, you know, Edith, the, one of the reasons I, I, I was attracted to your personality is because of how humble you are. How, how eager you are to mentor and just how cool you are as a person. You have a heart and that's such a difficult thing to maintain in LA. I'm just going to put it out there. Um, it's a very difficult thing to, to hold in LA and you, you just have that naturally. Um, right now, I just think like this is a time now, how can we figure out how to help people? How can we, how can we help them to build? So I don't know if, if, if there's anybody else that wants to ask a question uh, to move forward, because I have one, I just I want to ask really quick before um, Liz has or Rico wants to jump back in. Um, but just recently online, I saw something that that's always been on my mind for a long time, and I've never addressed it. And it is the artists that are, that are usually up and coming, and whether or not they've made it in the music industry or not, they usually start off with a manager that has been there with throughout their whole career. 
Like that manager is watching them um, make their first record. They slept in the studio floor. They were the ones that were driving them to concerts. They, if they needed an airline ticket and the artist couldn't afford it, a lot of the times it came out from the manager's paycheck because he was probably the only one that was working because he believed in this artist that much. He was like, yo, I'll work. You do what you have to do. And at some point, like in the middle of an artist's career, and this is for everyone, this is not only for, for artists, it's like it can be in the film industry too, or anything you do, right? Some, something happens, like an artist would meet an idiot or a stan or somebody like a, a Sean Holiday, somebody bigger in the industry, and they're like, uh, you know, I love what you did for me, but this person has way more experience. I think I'm going to take my career here. It's like LeBron. I'm going to take my talent down to South Beach, right? So what, do, what advice do you give to an artist that's thinking about that right now? It's like, yo, I know that this person is good for me because he rides to me and he's loyal to me, but this person understands every single thing about the music industry. I need that person to have my back. Are you saying that they're looking for a person like that and they're going to leave the other manager? Exactly. Or? They're looking for someone that can help them boost their career. Like, what advice do you give to the artist that's thinking about leaving their art, their, their manager that was always there for, with them from the beginning? Um, I would say that if that person was there with you from the very beginning, there's a certain amount of loyalty that you should have to that person. Keep them on your team in some capacity. If you're looking for someone that has um, more relationships, um, you know, just a wider network and knows how to negotiate your deals um, and kind of take you to the next level, there's always ways of partnering. Like you, you don't have to get rid of that other person. I'm a strong believer that like whoever is loyal to you in the beginning, you should really keep them around. Um, but if you're, I mean, remind me again, you want to, you want to give advice for them to seek out someone like us or. No, I, I, you answered it without answering the question, without even knowing you answered it. Um, because I think what I'm really trying to say is that the, the music industry is instilled in, in, in a lot of seasoned artists like managers like you that I can't share my profits, that I can't share my percentage. So my, my opinion on it, Edith, is if you are an artist and you had someone that's always had your back and they were managing you, of course, they might not have all the experience, especially for somebody that's coming from the islands. They don't, they don't know enough. They haven't been out there in the big world. They only know that they, they value this artist. They love what this artist is about, and they're about to push the hell out of them. But then something happens. There's a block. They, they don't know what else they're supposed to do to get them in front of major labels, to get their, their albums more streamed yeah. on Spotify. And, and the thing is, is that I, I'm just trying to figure out why people that are major managers in the industry cannot partner with someone that's always been there with the artist. Oh, no, we can, we can, I mean, we can always partner. That's, that's not something. No, listen, I mean, I, I work for Jay Brown. Jay Brown partners with people all the time. He, um, um, he'll bring in like, uh, say there's an artist that he likes. Um, then he'll sometimes bring on the manager to work for Rock Nation and work on that artist under Rock Nation. So that person gets a job and, you know, you get a full faceted team that's very experienced and has all the valuable relationships that an artist needs. So that's not out of the question. I think sometimes people are just kind of dicks and they don't, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes people just don't want another person and they don't, maybe they don't work well with co-managers. Um, but I'm, I don't, I don't mind co-managing. I have certain situations that I've worked out with percentages. If I feel like I can bring in my talents into a situation, but you know, someone is really good as like their day to day, then I can help guide them and we work it out. So that's never out of the question. It's more so who you're dealing with and who, who wants to do something like that. Some people just work better alone. Yeah, it is. But, but I mean, again, though, I'm a big, big believer that if you have people that stuck by you and they're loyal to you, they'll also be aware of how far they've, they've gotten you and how far they can still get you. So if they feel like they've contributed a lot but they really can't get you over this hump, they might themselves say, hey, I'm gonna take a back seat and let this person guide me for this period of time, but I still want you in my circle. You could be my creative director, um, you could be my day-to-day -day or my assistant or my tour manager, road manager. Like I've seen it at every capacity. There's, if you have your friends and you trust your friends, you're gonna keep them around. It doesn't even matter if they're gonna be your videographer or your digital marketing manager, you'll figure something out for them. 
Yeah, don't be afraid to do that. I, I got to echo that. Do not be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to, to, to learn. Just take a backseat and learn from what the experience is about to come along with the, with the artist's career. What about you, Liz? Do you have any questions? Yeah, I do. Um, I love that you're saying this. I mean, Dane, I love that question. You like straight up be loyal, folks. Just be loyal. No new friends. No. Um, <laughs> but my question to you, Edith, is speaking for a lot of um, artists from Cayman. So Cayman's a tiny island, right? But I think we all know whether it's film, whether it's music, a lot of the arts industries have changed. And so when I think about A&R and that role, um, it feels as though we've, we've gone from the discovering someone who is a complete nobody to, and developing them into an artist to having artists, independent artists first kind of forge ahead and create some uh, room for themselves and some following for themselves before it's time for them to be taken by, uh, taken to the next level by certain types of uh, people who are already established in the industry. So my question to you is for artists who are from, you know, a tiny island like Cayman, what are the things that they should be thinking about doing proactively in terms of planning their next steps and building up their momentum to make themselves attractive to a &R for like people like you and others? I mean, it's, it's really this industry is based on relationships. Um, Sometimes you can have a really big following online and executives won't, won't like it, won't, like, won't love the music or won't see the potential. Um, but sometimes you'll be an artist that completely doesn't have anything coming out. And you'll be introduced to a manager or an a &R through a friend and they hear the potential in your music, they hear the potential, potential in your vocals and they'll just take that, that risk. I've done that before. Um, all the artists that I have developed under my company have been, they didn't have a following. They didn't have even the name. We came up with the name together or, um, you know, we completely rebranded them. Like that's a big part of what we do at our company is artist development. So in terms of like executives and trying to make yourself like attractive to anyone, honestly, do your own thing. Like whatever, whatever you, whatever cadences you do when you, when you sing or when you rap, um, make yourself show your personality as much as possible. Um, if you are a moody person and you like horror or sci-fi or something like that, make those visuals appear on your social media. Like there's someone that's going to be connecting to that stuff. And there's plenty of executives. There's plenty of work. There's plenty of money in the music industry for people to give you deals. So be yourself more than anything. Um, but also don't forget that a majority of this industry is based on relationships. And I am more likely to answer my friend via an email or a text or an intro than I am via just a direct DM on Instagram. It's kind of like, you know, I mean, we all are the same way, right? Yeah. So um, be yourself and honestly be, be introduced to people, different people connect. Like even, even in music as like an executive, you constantly have to build new relationships. That doesn't stop when you're a songwriter, a producer, or an artist. You have to consistently put yourself out there. And if you're not like a people person and you go into a recording session and you don't make a great impression, most likely people are gonna talk. So just constantly put yourself out there, put your best foot forward, build. Build yourself and someone is gonna end up coming into your network that can do a lot for you. Man. I love it. I love it, man. Yeah. So we have eight minutes remaining because this thing is on a countdown right now. And I wanted to keep it on a strict amount of minutes so people can enjoy the video and not feel like it's overload. And and don't forget, Ida is one of those individuals that I, I want to bring down to the island to have more panel discussions. So she'll be down and we can ask more questions. Um, Rico, we're, do you have any that, Settle that panel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're we're still going to be doing it. It's going to be big. Um, Rico, any last questions before we, we bail out of here? Yes, for sure. Um, either just one last question here. Um, what do you say to like artists who may be stuck in like a bad deal or something maybe going on and they're obviously at a standstill. They don't want to create any more music and they're just not seeing eye to eye with the label and they want to really develop themselves more, but they know that the label really can't help them to that capacity. Um, I would suggest for that artist to get a really good attorney and try to find a loophole out of that contract. 
Um, but I would never stop being creative. Mm -hmm. I would consistently keep at it because another great thing about the industry that people don't talk about is that we will buy people out of a bad deal. And if we feel like you are a fantastic producer or songwriter or artist, we either will partner with another company or we'll just buy, buy someone out completely. Mm -hmm. So you should never stop. There is, it's not like there's no, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. There absolutely is. Yeah. Um, and, and that goes for every single thing in life. Like you should never stop going and you should never stop trying to figure out a way to release music and be consistently creative and evolve because every songwriter evolves to the next level. You may think, you may think you're the best songwriter right now, but without a doubt in three months from now, you're going to be looking at your songs and being like, wait, I wrote that three months ago. Yeah. Yeah. That. No? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever stop. Get a really, really good attorney. Get a really good attorney. Also, attorneys have fantastic relationships with managers and fantastic relationships with ARs. So if they feel like, um, hey, listen, I've gotten emails from attorneys saying, I really love this artist. How do you feel about managing them right now? And I'm honest. Sometimes I say, yeah, that's not for me, or I'll get a suggestion to somebody else. Um, and sometimes I'll be like, oh my God, thank you so much. This is a really great find. So I think that find a great attorney that has some great relationships and really knows contracts inside and out because there probably is a loophole of some sort. Um, I, I mean, I, I would have to see the contract though. Yep. It is. And um, for anyone, Edith is really cool with this, man. If you know her on social media, I'll go ahead and add her social media to the end of this video. And if you want to personally like DM her and ask her questions, because I know one of the deep questions I wanted to ask is like, yeah, how do we find the right attorney? Because we don't have it on small islands um, a lot of the time. So who do we find? Who do we look out for? But you can ask Edith those questions or if you mind, Edith, maybe there's a way you can tell us we can search attorneys really quick. We have like five minutes left. Maybe you can give us a way if we can search attorneys for good ones. Uh, Billboard provides like the, the, I think, I don't remember what the number is, but like the top attorneys in the music industry. So you should absolutely look up those attorneys. Um, if they themselves won't represent you, they usually have somebody that works with them that c could represent you that is equally as good. Um, um, it is on their way to coming up. Um, and I mean, I'm always down to provide some information. There it is, man, guys, that was love. Any last minute things for everyone they want to say before we bail out of the Homeland show, please, uh, you can go ahead and say it right now. We always do this uh, five seconds or less, just something that you want to say to the world, especially, especially now. Stay home, stay home, stay <laughs> in your yard and stay home. That's it. Thanks, Rico. <laughs> <laughs> You were doing this. I thought you were taking questions on the side. Uh, uh, go ahead. What, what, do you have anything you want to say, Edith? Yes, be creative. Don't forget that your mental health is the most important thing. So whatever you have to do to keep yourself engaged and going, until we know more information, just stay creative. Work out and eat healthy. And if you have a dog or a cat, pet your cat or pet your dog. <laughs> what about you, Liz? Yeah, I'm with Edith on, you know, we're both planners. So if you got a plan, try your best to stick to that plan and build yourself. I love that. Take the time right now. You have plenty of it. Take the time to build yourself because then you'll make the right match automatically. It'll happen for you. Amen, man. Thank you so much. And for me, I, I just, I want to keep it simple. Like, you know, I've, I've told the group this yesterday, like create your own mission statement, like identify who you are as a person. Companies do it. So why can't you do it? And if you don't tell people who you are, they will tell you who you are and they will develop mm -hmm. a plan for you. So remember wow. that you have to create your own mission statement of who Dane is, who Edith is, who Liz is, who Rico is, or you, the world is going to identify that. So while in this moment, there's no better time you're going to find right now where it's, it's in total rest and total quiet. And this is where you get to find out who you really are. So write your own mission statement. 